Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is solve equations with rational coefficients. Our objective is to solve equations with rational coefficients. Our real-world link is on social networks. Three-fourths of the students in Aaliyah's class belong to a social network. There are 15 students in her class that belong to a social network. First thing we're going to do here is to create a bar diagram and shade three-fourths of or 75 hundredths of it. Well, we have one, two, three, four bars, and if we want to shade three fourths of that, that's just going to be one, two, three. And we have a special guest star here. Hey, Joey. Say hi. Can you say hi? Huh? Yeah. Say yeah. hi to everybody. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for visiting. Bye. All right, so we have three-fourths shaded in. Oh, that was so nice. Three-fourths are shaded in. Now, it says label 15 along the bottom to show the amount of the bar that represents 15 students. Those are 15. Now, based on the diagram, circle the equation that can be used to find C, the number of students in Alea's class. Well, would 15 times C equals 3 fourths? No. Would 4 times C equal 15? No. Looks more like 75 hundredths times the class C is going to equal 15. Now, based on what you know about solving equations, explain how you can solve the equation you circled in exercise 2. Well, this is multiplication here, so what I would do, at least, is to divide each side by 75 hundredths. And then it says, how many students are in Aliyah's class? Well, if I divide both sides by 75 hundredths, this would cancel out. And using our calculators, 15 divided by 75 hundredths is 20. So C is going to equal 20, so 20 students in that class. Let's continue on. Part of rational coefficients will be decimal coefficients, so if the coefficient is a decimal, divide each side by the coefficient. So solve 16 equals 25 hundredths n and check your solution. We're going to divide both sides by 25 hundredths, and 16 divided by 25 hundredths is 64. Note, if you don't have a calculator or are not allowed to use a calculator on these, it is possible to do. You have the 0.25 or 25 hundredths on the outside. You can move that decimal place over twice. So you move the decimal point with the 16 over twice to get 1,600. And you divide like you normally do, except instead of the decimal point being there, it's two spot over, so just 64. Checking these equations is the same as you would with any equation. You Put your answer back in for n and multiply 25 hundredths times 64, and that is 16. And 16 was 16, so the solution is 64. What about our equations? 6 and 4 tenths equals 8 tenths times m. Once well, divide by 8 tenths on both sides. And this will cancel. And again, what you choose to divide by, notice the 8 tenths was with the variable m. And we want to get that m alone, so you're going to divide by 8 tenths on both sides. So on the left side, or excuse me, on the right side there, you're just left with the m. Now when it comes to dividing in long division, we'll show it on this example, and then we'll use the calculator with the rest. We have 6.4 on the inside divided by 8 tenths. And as a refresher, we cannot have a decimal point on the outside here. We're going to move that one spot over to the right. So we're going to move that decimal spot one to the right. And we can rewrite this as 8 divided by 64. Well, how many times does 8 go into 64? 8. Subtract to get the 64 and 0. So our solution for this, 6 and 4 tenths divided by 8 tenths, is going to be 8 equals m. 
Now we do want to show our check step here as well. And to check our work, start with the original equation, 6 and 4 tenths equals 8 tenths m. Make your substitution in that 8 4 m. And 6 and 4 tenths is going to equal 8 tenths times 8 is 6 and 4 tenths. So we are good to go. Our solution is 8. What about our next example? 2 and 8 tenths p equals 4 and 2 tenths. Well, here we're going to divide by a negative 2 and 8 tenths on both sides. Because again, that is the one with the variable. That is the coefficient of the variable. This will simplify. And now using a calculator, 4 and 2 tenths divided by negative 2 and 8 tenths is going to be 1 and 5 tenths, but it's going to be a negative. 1 and 5 tenths, since a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So when we go to check this, start with the original equation, negative 2 and 8 tenths p equals 4 and 2 tenths. Make your substitution in for p, which in this case was negative 1 and 5 tenths. That needs to equal 4 and 2 tenths. And when you multiply those out, a negative times a negative is a positive. And 2 and 8 tenths times 1 and 5 tenths is 4 and 2 tenths. So 4 and 2 tenths equals 4 and 2 tenths. We're checked. Our solution is p equals negative 1 and 5 tenths. For our last example here, negative 4 and 7 tenths k equals negative 10 and 81 hundredths. We're going to look and say, okay, let's divide by the one with the variable, which is going to be negative 4 and 7 tenths on both sides. This will be just 1, so we just get k equals 2 and 3 tenths, since 10 and 81 hundredths divided by 4 and 7 tenths is 2 and 3 tenths, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And for our check step here, let's start with the original equation, negative 4 and 7 tenths k equals negative 10 and 81 hundredths. Substitute in your 2 and 3 tenths in for k. And when you multiply negative 4 and 7 tenths by 2 and 3 tenths, a negative times a positive is a negative 10 and 81 hundredths, and that equals negative 10 and 81 hundredths. So we're checked. We're good. Our solution is k equals 2 and 3 tenths. For our word problem example with decimal coefficients, Jay has coached agreed to buy ice cream for all of the team members. Ice cream cones are $2.40 each. Write and solve an equation to find how many cones the coach can buy with $30. So we have $2.40 N. We just kind of took off the zero. As it said, write the equation $2.40 with 2 and 4 tenths. That's fine. We don't need the zero there. And we're going to divide by 2 and 4 tenths on both sides, and N is going to equal 12 and a half. Now, in this question, can you go up and say, yeah, I'll have 12 cones, and can I have half a cone? That ain't going to happen. That's really not going to be possible. And so you're not going to get 13 cones. They're not that nice usually at ice cream places. Some are, but most of the time you're just going to be able to get 12 ice cream cones for that money. Now, suppose the ice cream cones cost $2.80 each. How many cones can the coach get for $42? Well... Again, if we set up our equation, we're going to have 2 and 8 tenths times the number of cones he can buy, or she, and that will equal $42. And if we divide by 2 and 8 tenths on both sides, this will cancel out, and n is going to equal an exact 15. So 15 cones exactly this time. Now fractional coefficients also fall under this whole rational coefficients thing. 
And it says, recall that two numbers with the product of one are called multiplicative inverses or reciprocals. A lot of us learn when we are dividing fractions to keep, change, flip. Well, that whole flipping thing is reciprocals. And that whole reciprocal thing is multiplicative inverses. So they all go hand in hand. If the coefficient in a multiplication equation is a fraction, as it is here with 3 fourths x, multiply each side by the reciprocal of the coefficients. So 3 fourths x equals 12 twentieths. Note they did not divide by 3 fourths on both sides here. They multiplied by the reciprocal 4 thirds. They did all the simplifying here because notice, 4 thirds times 3 fourths just becomes 1. So you just get 1x. So all you have to do then is simplify the right side. We have the whole 4, 12, or 4 thirds times 12 twentieths. We use cross simplification here, divided by 4 there and there, divided by 3 there and there. Did 1 times 4 was 4, 1 times 5 is 5, and got 4 fifths. Now, just really quickly, would you get this right if you decided to divide on both sides? Yes, but it takes you a lot longer. I mean, if I divided by 3 fourths on both sides here, yes, this cancels, and you would get x equals 12 twentieths divided by 3 fourths. Well, how do you solve that problem? You have to go 12 twentieths, keep, change to multiplication, and the flip or the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. Wait a minute. This right here is the same thing as this right here. So multiplying by the reciprocal is really a shortcut for dividing and keep change flipping. So the point of these examples now are to learn, okay, I can just multiply by the reciprocal here on both sides. So this will cancel. And this is just saves me a step. So let's make sure we learn that in this lesson. Now our last guided example here, negative 7 ninths d equals 5, and check, you do multiply by the negative reciprocal here. So that becomes a positive 1d. And so notice how they rewrote the whole number 5 as 5 over 1. 9 times 5 was 45. 7 times 1 was 7. We just kind of threw the negative on on the side, and they simplify that down to negative 6 and 3 sevenths. Let's try three of these on our own. And the first one to try on our own is 1 half x equals 8. Well, in order to give us some more room here, let's rewrite this 1 half x equals 8. Let's multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. 2 over 1 times 2 over 1. Now, remember, I can write any whole number over 1 without changing that number. 8 is 8 over 1. Now, the neat thing here, 2 over 1 times 1 half cancels out. So I'm left with x equals 8 times 2 is 16. 1 times 1 is 1, so x just equals 16. And if I want to check this, rewrite the original equation. 1 half x equals 8. Substitute in 16 for x. And what's half of 16? 1 half times 16 is 16 over 2, which simplifies to 8. 8 equals 8, so our solution is x equals 16. What about negative 3 fourths x equals 9? Well, again, let's rewrite this. Negative 3 fourths x equals 9. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of 3 fourths on both sides, which is going to be negative 4 thirds on both sides. Now remember, this is going to cancel. So we're just left with x equals the whole number 9. We can write as 9 over 1. And before we move on, can we cross simplify? Sure. Let's look at this 9 and the 3. I can divide both those by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So now when I finish, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 1 times 1 is 
1. So x equals negative 12 is my solution here. And when I go to check this, rewrite the original equation, negative 3 fourths x equals 9. Substitute in your answer of negative 12. You can write that negative 12 over 1 if you wanted. And then, sure enough, negative 3 fourths times negative 12 is a positive 9. And 9 equals 9, so x equals negative 12 is our solution. And for our last example, negative 7 eighths x equals negative 21 60 fourths. Yikes. Let's rewrite that again. Negative 7 eighths x equals negative 21 60 fourths. Let's multiply by the reciprocal of which one? Well, our coefficient here is with the x, the negative 7 eighths, so let's multiply by negative 8 sevenths on both sides. This cancels. We're left on the left with x equals. And before we go any further, can we cross simplify? Sure. The 64 and the 8, we can divide by 8. 64 divided by 8 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. Let's not lose track of that negative, though. Let's just make sure we have that there somewhere. And then what about the 21 and the 7? Sure. Divide by 7, and you get 3 here and 1 there. So now we have the negative 3 times negative 1. We can just attach those negatives to the numerator sometimes. Again, you can keep them kind of on the side, or you can attach them to the numerators. Either way, this negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 3. And 8 times 1 is going to be 8. So 3 eighths. Let's check this to see if it is really that. Rewrite our original equation, which is negative 7 eighths x equals negative 21 60 fourths. Substitute in 3 eighths for x. And sure enough, negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. 8 times 8 is 64. So negative 21 60 fourths equals negative 21 60 fourths. So x equals 3 eighths is our solution. And as we move on to our last guided example here, Valerie needs two-thirds yards of fabric to make each hat for the school play. Write and solve an equation to find how many hats she can make with eight yards of fabric. Well, notice they have two-thirds times the number of hats, two-thirds yards times the number of hats n, equals the six yards of fabric that she has. They multiplied by three halves on both sides, which is the reciprocal. You, know, you can just write this six as six over one. And actually, if I were to do this, I'd have three halves times six over one. I would divide by two there and there, get one and three to make it easier to see that three times three is going to be nine over one, or just nine. So she can make nine hats. Now just to discuss this bar diagram real quick, we know we have thirds. We know we have two thirds. And basically six divided by two thirds, you can see six times three halves equals nine, kind of right there. Where we have six divided by the two thirds, keep change flip to get your nine that way as well. But solving it through the equation is even better. That is it for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed our guest star. Good luck.